In this video, we're going to talk about five things you have got to stop doing with your Fortinet deployments. Stay tuned. All right, guys, as you can imagine, I've seen a lot of crap out there as I come in and consult and help organizations fix their stuff. And there's five things that I absolutely despise seeing in small to medium sized businesses that if honestly, if the engineers would just stop doing them, they'd be much better off. Life would be easier, things would be a lot smoother. So we're gonna jump right in and we're gonna talk about these things so that hopefully you won't make the same mistake. Number one, stop using a single policy for all your traffic. You would be surprised, even in large scale organizations, how many of them run a single damn policy to allow all their traffic out. And it's basically an all, all, allow all. You wanna know what good that does them? Absolutely none. And they usually don't even have UTM on it. Break your policies up. Make sure your environment is done on an allow by whitelist only basis. Now, obviously, if your environment's not brand new, you can't jump right in and say, I'm going to deny everything and you have to send a change request to fix things. So obviously you would have an allow all catch all rule at the bottom of that. But guys, if you're not looking at that single policy and expanding your policies based on the traffic you see hit that, you're just asking yourself for a world of trouble. And the last thing you want to do is feel that kind of pain because you want to know the first guy that gets fired in a breach, the guy that configured it wrong. Okay maybe the information security officer, but the guy that configured it wrong is a quick second. Number two, stop letting your damn support expire. This is a next generation firewall. On top of that, it's the least expensive next generation firewall you can buy. So if your organization leadership has issues with you spending 200 bucks a month or 300 bucks a month on a smaller end unit, or maybe a thousand dollars on a larger end, or, you know, if you have a chassis, well, you're spending a lot of money anyways. But let's face it, if your business has issues with you spending a little bit of money, usually 20% of the cost of the upfront purchase, to make sure that you maintain support and service, you're in trouble anyways. You wanna know what makes the price argument even worse? I was wrong. I was saying two or $300 a month. This stuff costs two or $300 a year. Get your head on right and talk your leadership into it. It's worth it. You have got to let your device have support for a couple of reasons. You need it for firmware updates, enable you to continue and fix bugs and things like that. It's what's necessary in order for you to keep on doing business. Not to mention, web filtering does not work without it. You stop getting updates. IPS does not work without it. The only thing you have then is application control, which while that's nice, it's not going to give you that full unified threat management that you're supposed to have with a FortiGate. So do that. Make sure your support doesn't expire. It'll save you a lot of trouble in the future. And God forbid you experience an issue with the device and you have to call Fortinet support anyways. Because I promise you, I'm more expensive than Fortinet support and the UTM renewal. So if you're coming to me, you're in a world of trouble already anyways. Number three, guys, segment your network. There's absolutely no reason for you to have a single slash 24 network. I don't care if you only have five damn users on your network. Break it up into VLANs. Use the capabilities of your FortiGate to give you that level of segmentation and security that you need. But Mike, I only have three computers. I don't need it. Yes, you do. Because I guarantee you have printers. You got a damn Nest thermostat somewhere in the office of the house. You have LED bulbs. Lord knows I do that are on the Wi-Fi. All that stuff's made by the lowest bidder in China. Do you want them seeing your stuff? Did you know that IoT devices can be used for DDoS attacks across the globe, even though they're just sitting in a light bulb somewhere? Yeah, you should. So go ahead, do yourself a favor, stand up a VLAN specifically for guest Wi-Fi, stand up a VLAN for your data network, stand up a printer network, I already told you in one video how to make it to where multicast printing works between the two. So don't give me that, oh, I need my Apple print to work. I got you, fam. Check out the video. Not to mention, last thing you want to do is have someone jump into your IoT device and be able to immediately get into your network, especially if it's a work-related network, and get your organization secrets. Guys, number four, do yourself a solid. 
log your traffic from your devices. Even if you only have a single FortiGate, you want to know what good that is if you're not looking at it 24-7? I don't care if it's just making the damn thing alert through email in the log settings, which I wouldn't recommend, but get an analyzer, worst case, or, you know, some cheap Kiwi or something. Anything you can send syslog to, because then you can build alerts based on the traffic you see, so you only have to look at it when something's going wrong. You get updated when something is afoot. You know what that means for you? Especially in smaller to medium-sized organizations that don't normally have a large budget for IT staff anyways? Yeah, that means you get to focus on your job and executing other things that are probably going to be higher priority than sitting there looking at FortiView all day. Which, by the way, if you've ever tried to look at FortiView all day, you know as well as I that you're going to end up in a situation where you don't know what's going on anyways. Might as well set up the alerts and let the logging system do it for you. And if it so happens to be a Ford Analyzer, so be it. It'll make your life easier. That's a thousand dollars for a gig a day. Number five, and this is probably my biggest pet peeve organizations do. Stop doing firmware updates just for shits and giggles. There's absolutely no reason to do a firmware update unless it meets a couple of different criteria. And I'm gonna give you those items in the order that I would present them. Number one, does the firmware update fix a security flaw that my organization is currently exposed to? If yes, update your firmware. Number two, does it fix a bug that my organization is experiencing? If the answer is yes, update your firmware. Number three, does it give you a new feature that'll make your life easier? Maybe update your firmware. After you check the release notes, and let it bake for a little bit anyway, so you know if other people are gonna experience bugs that might not be in the release notes. Those are the only three reasons that you really, just don't do it, okay? Unless it's an end of life support unit, or it's gonna fix some security flaw, or make your life better in some way, don't do it. For instance, my lab FortiGate has 6.4.0. If you have a production FortiGate running right now at your organization, running 6.4.0, you're, you're just trying to spend all Friday night troubleshooting an issue because your organization can't be down because you decided to click update to get the most new stuff available. Don't do it to yourself. Stay stable, patch for security flaws first, bug second, and if it's not changing the way your organization operates to increase efficiencies or reduce risk, you probably don't need it right now anyways. Let the other jack wagons jump in and find the bugs for you so you're not staying up all night Friday night at the office doing stuff when you should be out drinking tequila with me. It is what it is. So there you have it guys. Five things you absolutely have to stop doing with your Fortinet deployments. It'll make your life easier and it'll make you less likely to end up in a stressful situation where you're questioning life anyways. If you like videos like this and you would like to see more, do me a solid. Hit the like button and then hit the subscribe button.